Welcome into Mental Notes Live. On today's episode, I've got actor, director, and writer Ian Seegers, and our musical guest for today is Nico B. DJ Woody, take us in. This is Mental Notes Live, the talk show that gives you tools to grow your faith, mindset, and progress. What's going on, guys? Welcome into today's episode of Mental Notes Live. I'm your boy and your host, Ryan Hale. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in today. I've got a very special guest, somebody I'm really excited to talk with. Um, this is a guy who lives in Phoenix, but he is an actor, director, and a writer, Ian Seegers. Ian, thank you so much for joining me today, bro. Thank you for having me. Man, it's a pleasure, man. Like I told you, uh, obviously, we're connected um, with different people here in Phoenix, so it's so amazing that I could uh, link up with you here and get you on the show to talk about acting and what's going on in black media today, which is going to be an awesome conversation. But before we dive into that deep stuff, let's talk more about you and how you got uh, started in acting. All right, so growing up, uh, I had this outlet of learning about the world through media, whether it's PBS, films, television. Um, I always told people that my father was always busy working, uh, which is a great thing for a dad to be like, but it's like I didn't feel like I had that father figure I wanted. So I kind of grew up on Fresh Prince, Uncle yeah. Phil being that father figure, mm -hmm. Family Matters. Um, and so for me, I, I recognize the power of media uh, or film or television and right. what it could impact. Um, I think for me, I tried to go a different route when I was in high school, I did GRTC, so I was like, oh, let's do military, something yeah. stable. But I remember taking an aptitude test, and actor was one of them. Okay. I was a class clown. I had all these qualities, I could probably be a good actor, try something else, and was like, you know what, let me let me take try my hand at it, because I didn't have the opportunities to act in theater mm -hmm. or in a high school play, whatever. And so when I was at my first base, I kind of went out for it. I said, you know what, I think I'm, I would make a great actor. Yeah. Tried it out, loved it, people loved me, and so I was like, this is it. This yeah. is this. I'm gonna cool. keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, man. Exactly. If you're good at it, why not, man? So that's dope. And I feel like now that I've got a legit actor on the couch, I said this earlier. Um, once I had a rapper on, but I used to act back in the day, Ian. And I don't like to tell people that. Uh, <laughs> I like to, you know, Ian. Some people, you, they say I'm not humble um, at times, so I don't like to brag. But I was the first Black Scrooge. Okay. Back okay. in sixth grade, you know. So. <laughs> I don't know how you want to feel about how you feel about well, that, I mean, but does it, does it have to be, you know, like I think that goes along the lines of like, does it have to be a white Scrooge? Exactly. But, but but going off of what you were talking about with not having those opportunities sometimes in acting in black communities, like for me, I grew up, like I said, I was the first black Scrooge, Scrooge in sixth grade, but it was like a mostly white school. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like it's still like that? Because obviously that was like 15, 16 years ago. Do you feel like it's still been like that or was it like that for you even with not having those opportunities to get into film or media or acting or do you think that's kind of changed over the time? I think where I grew up, it was what we choose to spend our money on within high schools, whether it's more on sports rather than art and drama. Right. Even in the military, it was like that. It was, yeah. uh, they cut away Tops and Blues, which, which was the, uh, for the Air Force at least, the only entertainment kind of way unless you played an instrument right. because it wasn't important. Mm -hmm. And so I think where we choose to put our focus, that's a huge thing. And where I grew up, I, I, I didn't even know of theater. I didn't know the okay. outlets because of my parents. They weren't into it. Yeah. I never really expressed this huge sense of, I want to be an actor. Mm -hmm. um, there was It was easy to find sports. And I think we had a drama theater down the road from us. It's just, I don't think I had that spark. Mm -hmm. uh, and then once I got it, it was simple, but I had to know what questions to ask, where to look, because a lot of people even reach out to me now and they're like, I want to be an actor, how do I start? Right. And it's simple to me because of how I went about it. Right. But I believe when I was younger, again, I would have to ask my mom, she would be like, I don't know. Uh, a lot of people when they were younger, internet, it, it, you know, you were using TomToms for GPS, so the internet wasn't as big as it is today. Mm -hmm. People weren't put, putting the opportunities of acting out there like that. So I think if you didn't have it at school, you wouldn't even know where to find in your community. Right. Uh, so I do think we have grown from the, not even an excuse, but the reasons behind of, I can't find it. Yeah. it it's somewhere, yeah. you just gotta look. Okay, okay. That makes sense. Well, in your opinion, then, how would we create more opportunities for acting, whether that be in lower income communities or stuff like that? How do we create more of those avenues so that they can get the education they need if that's something they that they want to do like you talked about? So I think a lot of times it, it goes back to is this pivotal in terms of there's politics in it, right? When it comes to schools, and I think 
what I've learned is, okay, if I can't change their minds about it, we gotta do it for ourselves. And right. I think so many people have gone through life like that. Um, a lot of times music, you can do it anywhere with whatever, people are drumming on the streets without any musical sets. Yeah. But can you do that with acting? Yeah. Yes, is it going to be as formal as a theater? People are hosting it inside their own homes. You can buy a script online. So it's, you gotta change your mind of what mm what that is, right? If you want to be in a film, we have our phones. So it's accessible now. Mm -hmm. And so if you can't get it from your community, I think you can make it for yourself. Gotcha. And people are doing one man plays, one woman plays. So it's to get that fix, to get that taste. Again, it might not be the generic way that we grew up on, but it's, you have to, I think, adapt with time. So I, I do believe that is the way. Okay. Um, and then bringing it up to show that more people want this. And I think the right people will listen to like, I don't know why, why we don't have it, we have the budget for it. Exactly, exactly, yeah. So kind of creating that awareness around it and kind of guiding people on the right ways to, like you said, change that mindset on it, which is dope, and that's real, real true. Um, and like you said, you're not new to this. Obviously, you've been doing this for a while um, and have had a lot of success, been in a lot of different projects. Um, one recently that you've been talking about on social media is Golds, mm -hmm. um, which has been in some film festivals and stuff like that, actually directed uh, by a guy who went to ASU, mm -hmm. uh, like myself, which is dope. So um, tell me a little bit about that project and how that experience was. So Golds was, uh, it was introduced to me by uh, guy, the, the writer and director Moses. Okay. Um, amazing man, I've worked with him on another project uh, where he was alongside it and he, he said, hey, I got this idea, mm -hmm. I'll hit you up. And uh, for me, it was cool, he's gonna hit me up. Time went by, I guess he's not gonna hit me up. Eventually we seen each other in the club, he was like, I still got that idea. Yeah. So it was that follow through that, that he hit me up on. Now the character that I had, uh, he was like, cool, he's a drug dealer, he's kinda edgy, and I've never been seen in that light. I was okay. a pretty boy next door, people was explaining me as, and so I was like, you, you sure I could I could do that? I've always yeah. wanted to. Right. Uh, the start of my career, I didn't do the generic, stereotypical black roles. Okay. Um, and it was cool that I could be seen in different lights, but here was, I think for me, that was the first role where it's like, yo, he black, but it's more hood, more urban. And I'm like, me though? People yeah. are like, he, he ain't a threat. Yeah. Um, and so to be seen in that kind of light, and he had a kind heart, so it was like, oh, I could, I could do this. Um, Reading it and then performing it, uh, Moses is an amazing director um, because it's like he he made me feel that dude. What you just did, go. You sure you like? I don't. You don't want me to. He said you did this look perfect. So for me, it was it was from believing that I could pull it off to being reassured that I am pulling it off. Right. Um, and then he always reassures me that I'm an amazing actor, that he wants to work, wants to work with me more. He's like, like how Michael B and Ryan Coogler. I'm like, bro, like, yeah. you, you see me as that? And so it is, uh, he wants to turn that into a feature film. Okay. So it is, right now it is a short, but he's like, bro, I, I have these ideas that I can't complete the way I want to just yet. Mm -hmm. So just be patient. Um, so goals went from this, this student film idea, but for him, he had a vision for so much bigger than that. And again, any opportunities I'm given, it was cool. Yeah. But to know that there's more opportunities down the road, it's just we're both growing our name, our brand, our skills to do it justice. Yeah. Um, but that was a story about his life growing up. Um, you know, it was, it was given, you know, different names. He was like, I knew uh, that kind of guy where I grew up at. Um, this story is about me being young. And so it was, again, entertainment for most people, but it's like, this is a true story that's, that we're telling. Yeah, wow, that's amazing. Amazing, if you haven't checked that out, be sure to check that out. Like you said, it's called Golds, um, an amazing um, short film right now. Um, but hopefully going to be a feature soon, which is dope, man. You said some stuff that kind of stuck out to me. You're talking about stereotypical black roles, and I kind of wanted to dive into that because I feel like we see a lot of that nowadays um, in just stereotypes of movies in mm -hmm. um, black media. Um, seeing a lot of movies highlighting black trauma, in my opinion, whether that be police violence, police injustice, um, black on black crime, stuff like that. So why do you feel like it's so easy or more comfortable for us, not for us to watch those films, but why do you think it's we're seeing so many of those films instead of films highlighting black joy, black love, mm -hmm. um, black success, stuff like that. I think to me, I've always thought of it like 
music, right? Hip hop, rap, um, not just, I think the black community, but the world in general right. uh, seems to glorify these things. And yeah. I think it's like a view into this world that you don't know of, mm -hmm. that you don't experience, but it's like, again, it's, it's popular for some reason. Yeah. Uh, growing up, it was popular to kind of be the cool kid, but what was cool was being mean, being edgy, being lawless in a way. Okay. And so I think in black media where who watches it glorifies it. Um, I think it's just, again, this viewpoint into a world that you're not even aware of. Uh, in the past, during COVID time frame, um, you know, there was topics of police violence and, and a lot of different races are like, I want to understand. Um, but it's, it's not on black people to tell those stories and get people educated. So I think some people turn to these, these outlets of film, television to to, that's their way of understanding, I think, black media or black culture. Um, I think for black people as a whole, it is, you know, you hear the, the discussions of why do we, why does it have to be a, a story of slavery? Right. Why does it have to be drugs? Yeah. Black people live normal lives exactly. and it's still entertaining. <laughs> right. And so I think it's the people that are watching it mm. I think they love the glorified things that they don't know. Okay. The for them again, it's it's not normal. Yeah. Uh, the normal everyday life, everyone experiences that to them. But for and I think black culture, we're like, yeah, we deal with this whether it's us or our families or the, my friend down the street. Yeah. This is a day to day thing. Yep. I'm tired of watching this right. as well. Like I don't want to live it and watch it. Can mm -hmm. we see something else? Yeah. Um, so I think it's just changing that narrative, and again. If people aren't doing it, then we have to do it for ourselves mm -hmm. and then show people that this is entertaining to watch too, Black exactly. Joy. Exactly. Um, and I think we have a few films, but again, it is not to the levels that I think as black, the black community wants it at. Right. Um, so yeah, it sucks. Yeah, exactly, it does suck. And like you said, those are some real statements. Like if they're gonna glorify it, we have to change it. And that was kind of my next thought process or what I've been thinking about is like how as black actors, black directors, black writers, how do we change that where it's not a small, tacky type of film, but it's something that is a big, like a, a slavery film or a, you know, a police injustice film. How do we change that? Does it take bigger actors or even actors like yourself turning down some of those stereotypical movies? Does it take, because you're also directing, right? Does it take us more of us t switching ch uh, hats from acting? to writing and writing some more of those projects. What do, you, what do you think it takes for us to, like you said, create that change in what we're seeing? So I think for me, choices is huge in my life, right? So you go from the dilemma of, do I turn down a role that offers millions of dollars that provides food on my table for my kids, right? Why do I have to do it when someone else is gonna pick it up? So I think getting away from that mindset, okay. uh, you do it because you want to do it, not, right. not because you feel forced. Again, you could take that money, tell that story, but then take that money, invest it into a story that does the opposite. It is knowing what is this doing harmful for the community. Again, goes back to the act, uh, the kind of music, the rap groups. Um, you know, a lot of people are like, you glorify hood killings, uh, gang violence, drugs, and this music. And it's like, yo, I'm just telling what happens. Do they have to tell that story? No. But it's, it's like, why not tell it? Well, because you're hurting the community. Am I, or, or is it the people that are listening to it? Um, so it, it becomes the question of who has the power, the audience, and I think it's the audience. Okay. Um, and then the part of, so me being an actor, starting out in acting, it sucked because I was only limited to whatever story that were out there that I could tell, mm -hmm. that people saw in me. But the reason why I wanted to change that is because stories that I want to tell I have to make it myself. I, I was never that person that said, oh dang, I wish writers would write some more stuff or directors. If you're not seeing it, you have to become it in my opinion. And so I think it is taking on the, the role of instead of whining about how the world is not changing, you have to go out and change the world. Um, I think it is, the media or media is going to do what they're going to do. Audience are going to listen to what they're going to listen to or watch whatever they're going to watch. It is, I think, giving them just kind of an analogy of healthy food, right? It's there for you to take. Yeah. Is it popular? No. Right. People still go to the fast food restaurant down the street. Mm -hmm. So I think whether there's many routes, whether getting rid of all the bad, which I don't think is realistic, because right. uh, then people get upset that you've taken that choice away from them. Mm -hmm. I think we have to make the better choice more appealing. Okay. Um, there's so many times where I think people do try to tell the stories. Mm -hmm. Is it popular? Does it get the money that comes back? Mm -hmm. You can have all the right intentions, but if it doesn't make money, money kind of make those those stories. So if we don't have those people backing it, mm -hmm. um, and if we're not 
If we're not getting through to them, then I think that's the issue. Uh, you probably hear of like hot, white Hollywood. Um, do we continue to ask these people to tell our own stories or do we take these these kind of ideas in our own hands? And we see stories like the like Key and Peele um, with the certain horror films, right? Yeah. Horror wasn't a black thing. Mm -hmm. And it's showing that we can do it, we can do it well, right. And it doesn't have to be this scenario scenario where the black people die, because now it's all black cast. So, so I think it's just showing people that we can do it, mm -hmm. and it is successful, and it can make money. Right. Um, not relying on this external opinion of uh, asking people for that opportunity. It's like, all right, cool, I'm, I'm gonna make this opportunity. Right. And keep doing it knowing that you are affecting it in a positive way, uh, and, and to always be strong and never give up. No matter if it doesn't seem like it's working, mm -hmm. to continue at it. People, I think people want it, and I think it will get to that point, but again, I think we choose so many toxic, negative things, and I, I think that's just human in general. Yeah, that's true, that's real, man, and I love the analogy, like you said, with healthy food, like it's there for you, and some of these projects are there for you, like you said, we just have to find a way to, to make it more appealing. Um, and I think kind of going off of that, when we talk about appeal, lots of times in these these um, acting award shows like the Oscars and stuff like that, we don't see a lot of black actors and actresses winning these awards, especially those who play those stereotypical roles that they're given, but they're still not winning those awards. So, I mean, my thought process on that is those people who are voting on those awards, it's not as diverse. Those people don't look like us. They don't, like you said, know the stories. They're just glorifying what is not normal to them. So what is your thought process, though, when it comes to those awards and, and how people are voting? And, and is that even important? So uh, at one point, I thought it was important, right? On the outside, looking in. Uh, so being military, I've been military. I was military for seven years, and I went reserves. Um, we give out awards every month, and then throughout the quarters, we give it quarterly awards, and then we give yearly awards. Mm -hmm. There are some times where some people that get the awards is not because they deserved it, but because they haven't gotten an award. Mm -hmm. I've had a moment where I was the better performer, but they're like, we're gonna go with this guy because we believe that the award can motivate him to be better and to kind of like that that carrot dangling in front of the rabbit. What? Right. It should go to the best person, exactly. right? And then to, to now change your mindset of how Hollywood might do it, right? The performances that we believe, the the masses audience is like, if it was a majority vote, some of these awards, like Leonardo DiCaprio not getting an award for the longest of time, right? Yeah. Now my, my thought process of what an award is is flawed. Is it just given out because it's like, Hey, I mean, he put the time in, mm -hmm. he's been in it long enough. I think, what? no, it should go to who's best for it, right? Exactly. So I, it kind of turned me off of, I don't do this for awards. Mm -hmm. I don't do this for the recognition, I do it because I love it. And so again, I think it becomes who is giving out these awards? Who has the, who has the opportunity to vote? And is it even, is it even realistic of, of how it gets you know, given out? Mm -hmm. I've seen it so many times where in my mind it's flawed. And so it's like, I don't do it for the awards. I don't think these actors do it for the awards. Um, I don't think it necessarily shows your level of, I guess, you know, who's better than who? Oh, you got five awards? Oh, you must be the best actor. Right. I think it's, I think in art at least, it's so opinionated. Yeah. So these awards, in my mind, don't mean anything, um, but to some people they do. So it's, uh, in the military, it's like, you could either choose to play the game, or just go without it, like just be like, look, I don't care about that, I'm gonna continue to do what I do. Um, because if you have awards, again, does it make you a better actor? Right. Uh, does this make a better, is this the best story? Mm -hmm. No, again, it's, I think it's so opinionated. Exactly. Uh, it depends on who you show it to, yeah. who was watching at that mm -hmm. time, right? So I, I necessarily never looked for those validations, okay. and I think, I think the most real people would say the same thing of, I mean, cool, I got this award. Right. I still got to put in work. Yeah. But you're nominated, you're, you were recognized. Mm -hmm. I That's think real. the real people recognize me from day one and they will continue to do that. That's so real, that's so real. It's not, like you said, it's not about the validation. And like you said, you don't do it for the awards. And I think you can take that in any profession. It's like, you, sometimes you got to ask yourself, why do you do what you do? Like, what are you passionate about? What's your purpose? And I think we talked a little bit about how you got into acting. But for you, I want to know, like, why do you act? Like, why is this something that you love to do? Um, it is, it is, uh, I remember someone saying, you're good at it, right? Uh, it comes naturally. Um, and even the hard work is easy for you. And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, that's, that's what you, you found your passion. I'm like, 
I mean, there, but it was it was comparing it to the other things I do. So I do a lot. Okay. Again, I said I was military. Right. I wanted to DJ, so I DJed. Uh, I grew up playing sports. Um, there's what else that I, I, I worked at a club. It was whatever I put my mind to. Uh, I thought that I would get bored at one thing. Mm -hmm. I wanted to try it all. Experiences is everything to me. Mm -hmm. So as an actor, I can now take these these life experiences and put into a character. Um, I love relating to people. I have. I believe I'm a huge empath. Um, I didn't care where people came from, but I wanted to know their story. Um, so to be able to tell their stories and do it justice, uh, to now put my mindset in another person or add the qualities that I have uh, to make it make sense to me, yeah. I think it's a it's a fun job. Yeah. Someone recently just said, we get paid to imagine. We get paid to be little kids. There's no reason why we should be mean to each other. Like literally, this is an imagination job. And I was like, that's right. Oh, that's like what? Yeah. All I gotta do is have fun. Yeah. And when I started out, I was like, I thought passion was, everyone was passionate. Mm -hmm. And people said, no. They said, you're gonna be successful. And I said, why? They said, you're passionate about it. You show up, you do hard work. Um, and and uh, they said, you're passionate, you do hard work, and you're, you're, you're fun to be around, right? And I was like, isn't everybody? It's like, no, you'll see, you'll see. And that's in any job right. that people do. But for me, art doesn't pay well. There are low statistics that you're gonna be one of the high paying people. Uh, you work long hours, they're like, cool, for the next three days, it's gonna be 12 hour shoots. Uh, okay, if you don't love it, I don't know how you continue to do it, because it's going to suck. Mm -hmm. And I think the love and the passion and the fun that I have with it carries me through all the bullshit, and I, in my mind, I'm a big advocate of finding what you love. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, this comes naturally, I do it well. The impact, so just doing it, yeah. I'm already successful. Right. But the fact that somebody can be, I said I have three things in life that I wanna do, entertain, motivate, and inspire. Um, I think with acting, I'm already entertaining. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody can be motivated by the story that I tell or inspired to go chase your dream. Just mm -hmm. the fact that this guy walked away from a stable job to act yeah. well, was something I love. And so I think I'm, it gives me the value out of life that I really do cherish and love. Yeah. Man, yeah, I could talk to you for hours, bro. <laughs> That's so crazy because you're talking about what I've kind of like the journey I've kind of been on is like you said, walking away from a stable job, doing something that you love. Because recently I walked away from a stable job to do something I love, which is videography and storytelling. So what was that like? I know we're kind of getting off the acting Ooh, thing, but what no, was that? No, what's that like? Like for people who are doing something that they're not passionate about, but there's something else they can do, but they're scared to take that risk. Like, what's that like? For me, so I think uh, there's uh, one of my best friends, she's like, you're really logical. Mm -hmm. And I think I bash my brain, I, 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 I beat up myself in terms of, am I dumb? I'm walking away from a good job in a pandemic. Yeah. On top of that, right? You're crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but it was with the, I've, so when I was in Japan, that was my first base. Uh, blessed, I traveled without a passport. It was, it was ignorant of me, because was, somebody was like, let's go to Bali from Japan. I was like, okay, let's do it. Yeah. On board, found out, they was like, do you got a passport? Was that, right? I didn't grow up traveling. Right. I, didn't, I didn't even leave the state. Yeah. So I, I had all these things, these life experiences, through this job, the military. How could I walk away from something like that? Well, when I was in Japan, I, I hit a moment of, I wasn't happy, right? For me, I didn't know what really depression was, but I said, if depression was a thing for me in my life, this would be it. I'm just not happy. But I had all the great things. I had a car, I had money, uh, I had family members that loved me. I was emceeing in the club for the first time, loved the attention. Even if it was fake attention, I had real people that loved me back home, so it wasn't like I just had the stereotypical things, but there was something that I was like, God, what is, what is this? Like, I, I, I have fun with my job. Yeah. Someone, I, I was seeking answers and someone was like, maybe because you're not doing what you were destined to do, mm -hmm. what God given you, uh, God given gifts, um, maybe you're not living your truth. And I was like, okay, okay, let me sit on this. Over time, I kept realizing that I think they're right. I think my truth is so much important. It didn't matter how much money that they were gonna pay me, that they could throw at me, that is when I learned that when people say money doesn't buy happiness, mm -hmm. that's what it meant. I was right. like, people ain't using their money right, because yeah. I was like, let me have money. Exactly. But it was, it's never enough if you're missing a few things that right. you truly want. Money can't buy me 
being an actor. I can't pay people to have me on their set. Right. I can't pay for the skills that I have. So the gifts, and then I, I remember listening to Denzel, he was saying everyone has gifts. Sometimes people have the gift of money. Uh, some people have the gift of talent, the gift of gap, whatever the case may be. And I sat there and I said, what is my gift? Yeah. And to me, the gift was acting, being an actor, being able to tell these stories and do it justice. So I always kept thinking, am I utilizing the gift that I have, the talents that I have through this military job? No. And every day, well, every other day, it would hit me. I'm like, why am I doing this? I remember when there was black violence, uh, police brutality at one point, and I was in, I was in training, and I was like, what are we doing? I don't care about protecting uh, the U.S. against terrorism when there's people like me dying right here. Why, why does this matter, right? So I think what gets you to that taking the leap of faith that people talk about, that you're gonna have to ju take a jump off the cliff to really end uh, up where you really truly belong, I think it's those, those whispers, those, those words in your head, that little voice saying like, this ain't it. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much money they throw me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how many hours that they have. I'm working like three hours and still right. getting paid an eight hour job. Yeah. It's still not enough. I'm like, bro, anybody can do this. Mm -hmm. It's not something that I want to do. And so I think that hopefully pushes you into a place of uncomfortness yeah. uh, where you start realizing I'd rather be upset, hardworking, doing something that I want mm -hmm. until I figure out that this is not what I want rather than continuing to do what I know I don't want right. just for the money. Because exactly. I think you end up down the road and you're like, I don't know, I'm unhappy. There's something, there's something about it. That's so real, man. And like you said, with uncomfort, because sometimes people don't realize the only way you can grow is if you're uncomfortable. And honestly, since I've left my job and become more, the most uncomfortable I've ever been in my life, I've grown so much. Like, it's like night and day. So that's some of the realest stuff, bro. And honestly, I keep talking to you for like two hours, bro. <laughs> I really could, man. But for the people, we're not going to do that. I'm just going to bring Ian back sometime soon. Uh, but let me end with a few quick hitters, bro. First, what are you working on? What are you most excited about uh, project-wise that you got coming up? So I completed a couple projects. Uh, one was a music video turned into a short film uh, with a local artist here, uh, Kareem, which I'm so excited to see his music video and, you know, the the hopefully the the talent and the value that I gave to it uh, wrap with the music uh, and become a full art piece um, I just did another film called vindication um, again an each role that I do, I love and I get excited about because it's a different side of me that gets to be told and hopefully I do it justice. This character goes from uh, going from jail, from living a, a difficult life where he made bad choices, then tries to rekindle with his family. And again, it's like, again, it doesn't have to be the black story, but this, this is a story that everyone is going through. I love the writing. Uh, it's an ASU film, which I'm so, I'm so blessed to have amazing student filmmakers creating great work where people are like, what, what is this? What? And I'm like, oh, a student film make this um, there's that was my last project that I did last week okay. and I told myself I'm taking a break uh, I've been told that you can reach the levels of greatness but it won't be enough right mm -hmm. and so I'm trying to figure out who I am um, when I'm uh, the talents that I have are so much more than again being an actor so now it is focusing more of my time on writing uh, focusing more of my skills and talent of being able to read people know beats and, 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 and the way things should sound yep. uh, as a director um, instead of being I said playing it safe I planned on moving to LA mm -hmm. And then I said, I will, I will hold that off right now and you utilize the resources that I have in Arizona that I didn't know I had yeah. um, and bring a community together that I think desperately needs people that are strong enough uh, to uh, do that, to, mm -hmm. I mean, stay awake, write things out, yeah. hold meetings where no one shows up right. because there are people that are eager for it, that are hungry for it, and I think uh, their life will be changed for it. Sure. Um, so instead of playing it safe with my own skill set that I, that I have, that is the next project I'm working on is uh, bringing a community together and again, creating those opportunities yeah. where people don't, they're like, bro, I can't find it. Well, I talk to everybody. Exactly. So I can give you the person that you need, that you're destined to, to have, and they're wanting the same thing. Yeah. Beautiful, setting up that network. I love it, I love it. Okay, great, man, well, that's awesome. One more quick question before we close out. Um, two or three actors that you're modeling 
or that you model your your uh, your acting career off of, or uh, writing or directing? So uh, one of them was Will Smith, because okay. uh, growing up he was like, "You look like him." <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> and to be compared to you know his his mannerism, his personality, mm -hmm. I believe how he is infectious to the world, uh, not just you know America, but around the world. Yeah. Um, and he doesn't do just stereotypical roles. He could do sci-fi, and I always, I never wanted to be limited. Uh, and knowing that I have the skills to not do that, I, I was like, that's what I want to be. Yeah. Most recently, I added to the list, which is cool, as you say, too, uh, Donald Glover, uh, because he's not only an amazing actor, he's an amazing writer, he's an amazing uh, uh, artist. He might not be talked amongst the best in these categories, right. but he does it all, and he does it well. And so it's not, again, limiting myself to just one thing. Thing. Um, so I was like, Donald Glover, that's that's yeah. goals, right? Two good ones, two good ones, man. I love it, bro. I've loved this conversation, man. Before I let you go, I have to close with a mental note, man. So whether that be a tip, quote, piece of advice you want to leave the audience with, what would your mental note be? Mm. Where I'm at right now, uh, it makes sense to give a mental note of don't run away from issues that you're dealing with, kind of confront them. Um, where I'm at, it was in my past, I knew myself as a certain way, uh, and to not think I can be better because I never overcame it, and kind of avoiding them by diving into more things. I avoid my problems. But to really come full circle back to it because I believe that no matter what levels of success I get to, um, or income, or whatever the case may be that people want, this thing inside me will always remember that I did not, I was not successful at overcoming it. Yeah. Um, so being okay with, again, uh, whether it's seeking out therapy, talking to people, um, sitting in silence is what I struggled with uh, because I didn't want to deal with those things. Um, and so that's what I would tell people, uh, confront those things that you had struggles with, um, to be aware, acknowledge them. Uh, doesn't mean you have to overcome them right now, right then, uh, but just have faith that you'll get over it. Doesn't doesn't you're not in a rush mm -hmm. but it is important that you still uh address them and exactly. work at it so that's what i would say definitely man really really good stuff i've loved this conversation so so much bro I, I really appreciate you for coming on before i let you go let the people know where they can find you at on social media or any other platform sweet um uh Instagram is what I use heavily, uh, as well as the content that I'm about to put out next. Um, uh, my Instagram is my name, so uh, Ian Seegers, as you see there. Um, and then again, uh, wherever the next platform is going to be, you'll find out firsthand on my Instagram. So stay tuned, stay locked, and keep up. Dope, man. An amazing actor, writer, and director. Somebody that's coming out with a lot of dope uh, projects and somebody with a lot, of, a lot of knowledge, man. So thank you so much for coming on, Ian, bro. It was a pleasure, truly. You've seen some amazing musical guests on season two of Mental Notes Live, and today's guest is no different. Here to perform her song, Come Back, give it up for Nico B. What's up, y'all? My name is Nico B. Follow me on all platforms at I am Nico B underscore. Hey! Baby, come back, come back. No, I just can't get enough. Need it right back, right back. Just one love and affection You can leave me your direction Alright And it's driving me crazy I can't be without it And I'm missing you, baby In this moment I don't want to forget Yeah I can't lie, having visions. Give it so good, can't deny it. Ooh. 
much again. My name is Nico B. We out. Man, that song is gonna be stuck in my head all week. Man, what an amazing performance from Nico B. Thank you so much for being on the show. And shout out again to my brother, the amazing guest, Ian Seegers. Man, I hope you guys enjoy the episode today, but you know I can't let you leave without my final thought. And my final thought for today's episode is be you. You are more than enough. I know Ian is an actor and we talked a lot about um, how he had to come into different roles and how to become confident in himself and to shift different roles. But the thing that is consistent about him is he is okay being himself. And that's how you should be in any area of your life. Be okay with being you. You is more than enough and you is what people need. So don't be afraid to be you because that's why you were created. I hope you guys enjoy this episode of Mental Notes Live. I've always got to shout out our sponsor and partner, the man who made this amazing, amazing shirt, Kafers, um, and also his wife, Rachel, of Kafers Clothing. You've seen their products all throughout the season and you'll continue to do the same. But as always, check out their website, kafersclothing.com. We've got a promo code for you guys, MNL20. So be sure to head to the web website um, and use that promo code so that you can get 20% off of everything on there. As always, hit the like button below if you enjoy this episode be sure to subscribe to our youtube channel and hit the bell to turn on post notifications you know i'll see you guys next week peace